LHS. I'm JP. And I'm Logan. Welcome back. We hope you had a great break. Yeah, and welcome, Logan, back to BDN. Thanks, man. It's a new decade, so we want to start the year out right. So here's some important info reported by New Orleans Station, WWLTV Channel 4, about writing out the year 2020. Of us are making the adjustment from writing 2019 to writing 2020. It is weird, but abbreviating 2020 with just the numbers 2-0, it's already come with a warning. Our Devin Bartolotta dives into the truth behind a viral social media post that's asking people to double check the date before signing documents. It's made the rounds on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. Tweets like this telling readers to write 2020 in its entirety on paperwork to prevent legal headaches. The idea is if you sign on the dotted line and you abbreviate just the date as 2-0, someone could go ahead and add other numbers and your document or your check is now backdated or future dated. This advice has been shared thousands of times all over the internet, but is this really vital? We asked consumer attorney Samuel Ford what he thinks. I do think it's overblown as things often are on social media, but it is something that's good and easy to know and easy to do. I mean, in the consumer fraud environment that we're in right now, anything people can do to protect themselves is always a good idea. But Ford says he will be writing 2020 in full on legal documents and advising his clients to do the same. Here are some possible scenarios. Number one, bank and credit card statement disputes must be in writing and they have to be done within a certain time frame. A change to the date on your letter could invalidate it. Number two, payment agreements. If you're paying off a debt for so many years, someone changing the date on the agreed upon time frame could allow them to claim that you missed payments. And number three, debt collectors. A wrongdoing debt collector could claim they never got your check, request a new one from you, then years in the future, change the date on that first check and cash it. And while these examples could really make a mess, the good news is they might not hold up in court. Whether or not a fraudster could create something that held up is a different story than whether they can create a huge headache. If it went to a legal battle, would you eventually win? I would, I would think you would, but you know, if you could go back in time and write the date differently, I'm sure that would be the better option. There are also federal consumer protection laws in place that could protect you if you become a victim of this kind of fraud. But to save yourself the wasted time years down the road, it is best to write 2020 in full as a best practice for now. Back to you. The Devilettes closed out the decade winning the Zaxby's Holiday Invitational at Kenwood High School, winning 53-43. to Big shout out to Aaron Grace Lester, Alyssa Malowski, and Addie Grace Porter for making the all-tournament team. Congratulations to the boys basketball team on winning the Aflac Christmas Tournament in Watertown. The Blue Devils moved to 10-1 on the season after they defeated Cookville in the finals 76-63. to Malcolm Lug was named MVP of the tournament, and all tournament honors went to Jared Hall, Kobe Tibbs, David Green, and Gavin Reasonover. All right. Congratulations to our boys' basketball team. Sporting events start back tonight, and there's going to be a boys' and girls' varsity basketball game at Wilson Central. JV boys start at 4, girls' varsity starts at 6.30. The, team, the theme for tonight's game is Red Out. There's also a wrestling match at Clarksville tonight at 4.30. You know, all this talk of sports has me thinking about sports, so let's throw it to sports with Ian. What's up, LHS? I'm Ian, and this is your sports news. The boys' basketball team played in two tournaments over Christmas break. In the Aflac Christmas tournament, the Blue Devils defeated DeKalb County, White House Heritage, and then Cookville in the finals to take the tournament title. Jared Hall, Kobe Tibbs, Gavin Reasonover, and David Green made all the tournament, and Malcolm Lowe was named tournament MVP. After Christmas, the boys played in the Middle Tennessee Invitational Tournament at Franklin High School. They won games over Nolensville and Ravenwood in the first two rounds, but fell to the host Franklin by two points in the finals. Seniors Gavin Reasonover and David Green both made the all-tournament team. The girls played in Myrtle Beach. Addie Porter was named Most Outstanding Player of the Tournament, and also the Invitational Hustle Award of the tournament was given to the entire team. Alyssa Molosky was also all-tournament in the Kenwood Tournament. We also played in the championship in the Zaxby's Classic at Kenwood High School against Bowling Green. Down 40-35, to entering the fourth quarter, the Devil Outs outscored Bowling Green 18-3, as well as a 13-0 run at the end of the game, with the Devil Outs on top 53-43. to 
All tournament, Alyssa Miloski, Aaron Grace Lester, and Addie Porter led the way. The boys and girls are both back in action tonight against rival Wilson Central at Wilson Central. In college news, UT defeated Indiana 23-22 in the Gator Bowl. It was a close game, and UT pulled off a 13-point comeback in under five minutes left in the game. With pro sports, the Nashville Predators fired their head coach, Peter Lafayette. This probably happened due to the Predators being one point out of last place in the division. The Tennessee Titans beat the New England Patriots and are on their way to the divisional round against the Baltimore Ravens. The Titans beat the Patriots 20-13, and it's all thanks to Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry ran for 182 yards and a touchdown on his birthday. That's all the sports I have for you, LHS. I'm Ian, and this has been your Sports News. Hope everyone is getting ready for our annual snowball this year on Saturday, January 25th. And speaking of the snowball, there will be a student council meeting on Thursday discussing preparations and planning of the snowball. Make sure you come join us after school Thursday in the library if you want to participate in the yearbook pre-orders that end on February the 15th. Yearbooks are currently $80. For a personalized touch, you can stamp your name on the front of your yearbook for an extra $15. Ooh. Name stamped yearbooks must be ordered by January 22nd. Blue Devil players are going to have a meeting tomorrow after school in the auditorium, and the Humane Society will meet on Monday after school in C200. The Lebanon Band will be hosting its first ever prom consignment sale on January 17th and 18th. Wow! You can sell your old prom attire and come to the sale to purchase new attire if you'd like to as well. You can drop off at the LHS Band Room from January 11th through the 15th from 3.30 to 5.30. All items including prom dresses, suits, tuxes, shoes, and etc. are subject to approval by the Lebanon Band Consignment Sale Manager. That's all the news we have today, LHS. I'm Logan. And I'm JP. Y'all have a great semester. And seniors, this is it. And this has been news to you from, from the, the White and Blue. Blue.